So what we're doing today is that we're out on a carp lake and we're going to have some fun with these, the new method feeders. So it's my first time out with these, so let's get them out in the water, see if we can bag ourselves a few carp. So the way I've approached the session is initially when I got here straight away using the smallest spawn that I've got I've just put like four spawns of bait out. That's mainly made up of hemp and corn. So you could rely on just what's on the feeders, you know loosely pack the feeder for four or five casts um, and then on the fifth just leave it. You might have seen me do that in other videos. So in other words, in other words using the feeder to get some bait out initially rather than a spawn but you know, we're coming into mid-May now and these fish, they're gonna be getting quite hungry um, and there is a reasonable stock of carp in here. So I've decided, yeah, to, to use a small spawn, not a large one, just a small one, just to get you know a little bit of bait out there. And then I'm fishing just a single rod initially uh, with the flatbed feeder over the top of that. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how I'm loading up that feeder now. Right, I'm just going to very, very quickly take you through the rig and it could not be made more simple. We have got the method feeder. This one is 50 grams. So I think that's sort of like a medium sort of like weight for the feeders. They come in a range of different sort of like sizes and weights. I've wanted to use the large feeder. You know, I might use the smaller one for tench, but for the carp, I'm wanting to use the large one so I can get a reasonable amount of feed on the feeder. Um, then I have got a turbo bead there, one of the turbo beads, really strong little component. And onto that, I've got one of the ready tied rigs, one of the new grappler ones, because I want a rig that is really, really strong. And we know that the grappler is. And what, I, what I tend to do with these rigs is that I'll buy them in in the 15 inch, so long. It's, it's like a, a mono rig, uh, 15 inches long. And then what I do here is that I just cut them down to the length that I want, because obviously I don't want them 15 inches long if I'm gonna use them on a feeder. I'm cutting them down to about four or five inches, probably five inches. I've put my own figure of eight loop knot not on the rig, um, and then it goes onto the, onto the turbo bead. So yeah, literally just three things you need then. The method feeder, the turbo bead, and the ready-made grappler rig. And what I'm using, and what I nearly always use on sort of like flatbed feeders is a wafter. This one's like a 15 mil one. To go into a bit of a detail, something I've always done with boilies is I've just broken the skin. I just think it helps some of the flavor come out. So you can see I've sort of like trimmed that up, trimmed it um, into more of a barrel shape. Not necessarily because I like the shape, just because I, I like to break the skin uh, and release a bit more attraction into the water. What's really nice about the sticky pellets is that they're so easy. They're so easy to use. You know, you can turn up, just put a little bit of water in there, give it five or 10 minutes, uh, and it'll soak all that water up. What I then find is a tiny little bit more, and then they're pretty much ready to go. You know, you've got pellets that will stick on the feeder beautifully, like within minutes. Uh, so yeah, like with a lot of my fishing, minimum faff, and uh, yeah, you're ready to go. I think I'm sort of like taking a gamble with the approach that I've taken. I'm hoping for a hit of fish. If I, if I get one fish doing this, then it's a bit of a fail. I could have done that a while ago, I reckon, by stalking or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, there you go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, I'm, I'm sitting on my hands a bit. Look at those. quite a lot of bream in here which is why I'm not hitting that those bites if there's a shoal of bream in the swim I will get loads of liners right I actually feel like I've made a bit of a mistake <laughs> uh, with the bait to be honest, I think there's too many small items in there because I'm just getting so many liners without actually getting a take. I think because I've put, you know, I've put some two mil pellets in with some hemp and some corn, and they just, I think I've got a lot of bream and smaller stuff mulling around the swim, giving me liners. 
um, and I think I need to put something a bit more substantial into the mix. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some 6mm and 8mm um, spicy sausage pellets in with it and that will bulk out the mix a bit and give, you know, a larger food items that aren't being mopped up by small fish and hopefully that's going to bring the carp in, get me the take that I'm after. And at last that rod has gone. <laughs> Ah, it feels like we've got a decent carp on. Got a nice strong rig on, I know that, with the grapplers. Oh. Really nice dark looking common by looks of things. Colours on that look stunning. Let's get a net under him quick. And there we are. <laughs> oh my gosh, Stan are the colours on this are oh, to die for. Look at him. Oh, <laughs> cracking fish. And the first one on the new method feeders, absolutely stunning. <laughs> Amazing. So there we are, we just had to be a little bit patient. I think bulking out the, the mix that I was putting out into the, into the swim, I think that's definitely uh, helped. Uh, I, I think I, I was, I was just being sort of like uh, pounded by the small fish. As soon as I bulked it out, feels like the carp have now come in. Hopefully, hopefully now we'll string together a few fish. Not talking much here because uh, had to give that plenty it kited right and that's the last thing I want it to do in this swim not quite like the other one we just had <laughs> but it's action I don't know if you can see the amount of sort of cabbage and stuff in the edge so you do need strong gear and uh, yeah the grappler ready tie rigs are proving strong enough for sure. Okay, come on. Oh, no. it's not having it. Yep, yeah, there he is. Come on, come on, come on. There we are. Look at him, lovely. Not quite as big and not quite as dark this time, but still a stunning, stunning fish. And he fought so hard. Method feeders doing the business. So I think that fish has probably wrecked the swim <laughs> for a while. So what I'm going to do, I'll take the opportunity to look at the method feeders in a bit more detail. Uh, it's given their correct name, they're actually the camo method feeder. Uh, one of the really nice features of them is that they are completely interchangeable. So you look, you see it's on the stem there. What you can do is you can push the stem out like so, and then you can actually remove the feeder off the line like that. So now that feeder has come off of that line. What this means, of course, is that you can very quickly change these. Like I say, they're from 20 grams right up to 60 grams. And so being able to quickly chop and change the size and the weight of the feeder is really good. And in actual fact, you can even swap these out for a grub feeder if you wanted to. Imagine if you were using these for tench or something like that, being able to quickly change from sort of like method fishing with sort of ground bait and pellet and being able to very quickly try and uh, maggots, then you can very quickly take that off of the stern, put the grub feeder on and then carry on fishing with maggots. So 
So another cracking common, uh, the commons in here are to die for. You know, it didn't quite have the coloration of the first one, did it? But you know, uh, yeah, it does feel like now, whilst it took a little while for them to get on the bait, it feels like now they, they are on the bait. Wouldn't, yeah, yeah, that's another liner now. It wouldn't surprise me if we do manage to get another one uh, fairly soon, uh, you know, before we lose the light. And that one tore off. It gave me a right rock around the pads in the edge. Fantastic sport on the feeders. After each bite that I'm getting, I'm putting just two or three more spoms out. Not a lot, remember, they're only half spoms. Um, no, so after each bite I'm doing that. Likewise, if I've not had a bite when I think I should, then again, I might just top up the swim. So yeah, sometimes you might find that you just have to reignite things. You just sort of got to play it by ear a bit, I think. My advice, when you are clipping up and trying to fish in this very accurate way, you know, like the carp boys, like two rods on a spot and all the rest of it, my advice is when you're doing that style of fishing, I do think it's good to master that because you know you can utilize that in your tench fishing, your carp fishing, your bream fishing. Being able to fish accurate like that on a patch is 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 a skill that's worth mastering for sure. Um, something that I do is I just make a point of not stretching myself when it comes to distance. You'll, you'll be surprised how short I'll do this. I know that I'm pinpoint accurate at nine wraps. <laughs> now that sounds like nothing, doesn't it? But I know that I'm really accurate at that. Um, you, so do, do it, you know, go well, well within your means, just to make sure that you're really accurate. You know, if you start to lose it uh, when you get up to 14, 15, 16, 18, when, when, when you're starting to lose that accuracy, you know, unless there's a blindingly obvious feature that you're fishing up against or on, then just come back a bit and uh, make it a bit easier for yourself and just try and make sure that you really are getting it on a dinner plate. <laughs> And when I say clipping up as well, so that you're fishing accurately with the with these method feeders. Oh, oh thought that was going to go. Uh, if you're fishing, you know, you want to fish accurately with these method feeders uh, in terms of hitting the same spot all the time. Certainly, if you're going to use them in conjunction with a spod like I am here, you're going to want that spod sort of accurate as well. Uh, people do that in variety of ways today i've paced it out along the bank and just sort of like clipped it up at the range that i want it uh, other people use sort of like float pole elastic and float elastic on the line you can do that or of course you can use the wrapping sticks whichever way you want to do it the main thing is that you are getting those rods very very accurate on your baited patch and hitting that spot every single time If we want to go into the detail about, you know, when I'm fishing this style, when I'm fishing on the clip, and I do do it for carp and tench and bream and everything, what I'm trying to do when I've got these flatbed feeders or these method feeders is I'm trying to hit the clip when that feeder is only about a foot or so above the water's surface. And for me, that's really important. If you can imagine, if you're casting it, overcasting it by miles and hitting the clip when it's 10 or 15 foot up in the air, not only is it bouncing back towards you, but in actual fact, when it crashes onto the water surface, you can be fairly sure that all those pellets are just falling off of the feeder and you haven't got that nice tight little parcel that you're after. So yeah, that's something that maybe, you know, try and do again. That's why you want to fish within your means. Don't try and stretch yourself when you're casting it. Hit the clip just above the water surface and to be honest, that's almost like placing it in by hand, you know, and making sure that you're fishing fishing more effectively and that that rig is fishing exactly as you want it. And there we are. Just a little one this time. But you've got to love them all, haven't you? 
Uh, that hadn't been in the water long at all, that one. So yeah, the method feeder's definitely starting to work now. So it did end up a little bit of a weird one. Uh, the fish slowly got smaller, didn't they? <laughs> As we went through the session. But we did start with that really nice sort of like chunky chestnut common. So not complaining and have very much enjoyed my first session using the new camo method feeders.